Welcome to our Wednesday afternoon Lenten service here at Washington Street United Methodist Church. I'm so glad that you are joining us in this time. It is an unusual way for us to do worship, and yet, wherever we gather in God's name, even virtually, we are one in Christ. And so I'm glad that you are joining us today. We are very blessed to have with us today Bishop Kenneth Carter, who is a retired bishop in the United Methodist Church. His last Episcopal service was in Mississippi Conference, and then he retired from Duke Divinity School, where he was a professor. We're so glad to welcome him today, and we are grateful for his presence with us in these circumstances. Please join me now for our opening prayer. Oh, 
understanding who Jesus is in John's Gospel. Jesus is the very incarnation of God. Jesus is God's logos, the Word, God's power, God's presence, God's reconciling, redeeming presence in the world. All of God that can be gotten into human flesh is in Jesus. And here He is facing the end of His life, offering to give others a peace. Indeed, it is a peace spoken of by the Apostle Paul, a peace that passes understanding. So the peace that Jesus offered is nothing less than the assurance that we too are participants in God's mighty acts of salvation. What God did in Jesus the Christ, God seeks to do in all of us to embody the divine presence. So there is this peace, uh, is the assurance that you are not alone. You are part of the presence, nature, and mission of God. Just as Jesus perfectly participated in God's mission, wholly and completely, we too are called to participate in that mission. And we are connected to this God who is the creator of the whole cosmos and yet is present in each of us. So it is a peace that is the assurance that we are part of something greater than ours, ourselves. We are part of God's ongoing work of the healing, redemption, reconciliation, and transformation of the world. And what is the essence of that transformation? What is the essence of God's presence among us? In John's Gospel and indeed throughout the New Testament, it is summarized in one word, love. It is to participate in a life of love. And what Jesus gives to his disciples and to us is a vision of a, of a world and a life that is part of God's redeemed love, a redeeming love. It is a vision of a world where love is all in all. So that whenever we participate in love, we are participating in the presence, the nature, the power, and the mission of God. And we all know, I think, from our own experience, that we feel most at peace. We feel most whole, most alive, when we are engaged in a relationship of radical, unconditional love. It is love in John's Gospel that is the essence of life itself. To love is to be alive, and to love is to participate in God's own life and mission. And during this pandemic, we are given even new opportunities to be a part of what God is doing in the world. Because in this time of social distancing, we all yearn for love. We yearn for connection. We long for a touch, a gentle word, a smile. We long to be connected with one another. And therefore, as we participate in connecting with one another through social media, through notes, through telephone calls, or in whatever way we find to connect with another, we are participating in God's own presence, power, and love. We are participating in, we are praying for 
peace, shalom. We are, in fact, contributing to God's shalom. Now, there are many who are demonstrating this in very dramatic ways. The healthcare workers who risk their lives on the front line. You may have seen that segment from 60 Minutes on Sunday evening when a physician in New York said she was weary after spending several 16-hour days and eager to go home and be with her family. But when she got home, she was equally eager to get back to helping others who were so vulnerable. That is God's shalom, participating in God's healing. All of those who risk their lives or who just simply in simple expressions of caring and love are participating in God's action of shalom. Our prayers become our way of acting, or our acting become ways of our praying. I have a friend who has said that during this time that she is, has committed herself to be in touch with at least three people during each day. People who are especially lonely or vulnerable, frail or cut off. A simple act. But Jesus defined love as doing simple things. A cool drink of water. A visit to the prisons. Aid to the poor. Simple acts of kindness. Just this morning, as I was walking around the community where I live, the retirement community at the Heritage of Lowell, I passed by the healthcare center. And there at the door, in a wheelchair, was a woman whose husband is accustomed to visiting her every afternoon. But she had her hands up against the door handle, peering out longingly. I went in front of her, and I smiled and waved. And suddenly, her face lit up, and she returned the wave. A simple thing, but in that moment, I experienced shalom, connectedness, wholeness, in that moment. So, during these days of social distancing, let us not disconnect, but let us find new ways, different ways, of expressing love to those about us, those within our families, those at some distance, but who still need our notes or our calls, our assurance that they have not been forgotten. So Jesus prepared his disciples for his own departure. He's distancing himself from them. No longer will they have his physical presence. But he said, I go to my Father, but I will send you another. I will send you the Spirit. It is that Spirit that we participate in when we share our own love, concern, and compassion for one another. So in this time of uncertainty, of grief, of loss, of even fear, let us hear again the promises of shalom from Jesus. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you orphaned. I will come to you. Another commandment I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. And then this promise. Peace, shalom, I leave with you. 
not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. For love triumphs. Nothing in all creation is able to separate us from the love of Christ, the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So this benediction from the Apostle Paul, the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And one of the prayers, one of the great prayers of Shalom is the prayer of St. Francis. I close with that prayer. So will you join me in praying this prayer of Shalom. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard you and keep you in peace and in love. Amen.